Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 11 of the chapter Redox Reactions. In the past video, when I was winding up, I said that in this video, I will be doing the half reaction method. And after I explain both the methods, then we will be taking examples and solving uh, a few, uh, we'll be balancing a few equations to understand it further. But then I got a doubt from a student yesterday and I promised to solve that, uh, that equation for her by the oxidation number method. Therefore, I decided instead to do these two equations and solve them or balance them by oxidation number method. And I will be doing the half reaction method in the next video then. So not wasting any time, let us straight come to the problem. The question that she asked me was that she, she gave me this equation that P4 plus OH negative gives you pH 3 plus H2PO2 negative and you're supposed to solve this or balance it by oxidation number method. If you remember the five steps, the first step is to write down all the formulae correctly which is already given to us and now we are supposed to uh, find out the substance that got oxidized and reduced in the second step by uh, assigning the oxidation numbers to all the species that are present. So P4 any element has an oxidation number of zero. OH, in OH, H has a plus one oxidation state and oxygen has a minus two oxidation state. In pH3, hydrogen in comparison to phosphorus is more electropositive. Therefore, phosphorus has a negative oxidation number. Hydrogen is plus one, therefore phosphorus would be minus three. Since there are three positive ones in hydrogen and phosphorus is balancing those three positive charges, so phosphorus should have a charge of minus three. In H2PO2, hydrogen has plus one and there are two hydrogens. Oxygens, you have two oxygens. Each oxygen has a charge of minus two, so oxygen has a charge of minus four. And the entire species has a charge of, has one negative charge. So for oxygen, you could say has three negative charges. Okay. And actually oxygen has a charge of minus two. It is showing an oxidation state of minus two. And therefore, if you have overall, now there is one, there are two positive charges, two positive charges. The overall charge on the, uh, on the iron is minus one. Oxygen has minus four and overall charge is one therefore two positives and two negatives are already cancelled one so you're left with two negatives one negative remains because that is not neutralized therefore you're left with one negative charge that negative charge should be on phosphorus right or oh, sorry that negative charge should be neutralized by phosphorus therefore the the oxidation state of phosphorus in H2PO2 negative should be plus one, right? So we have assigned the oxidation states of all uh, elements and we find that phosphorus is undergoing both oxidation and reduction in these two uh, molecules. So P4, which was zero, changed from zero to minus three. It go went from a positive uh, charge to a negative charge or oxidation number is decreasing. If oxidation number is decreasing, it means it is gaining three electrons, right? It is gaining three electrons and phosphorus when it turns into from zero to plus one, it means the positive charge is increasing. It means it is losing one electron. Am I clear? When it goes from a charge of zero to plus one, it is turning positive. It means it is losing one electron. But when it is going from zero to minus three, it is decreasing, the negative charge is increasing. It means it is gaining three electrons. So loss of electrons is oxidation. Here, the oxidized product is H. After oxidation, you get H2PO2 negative, And after reduction, you got pH three. Reduction of P4, right? So after reduction, this is reduction and this is oxidation. Loss of electrons is oxidation and gain of electrons is reduction, right? So we have understood what got oxidized, what got reduced, one second. So as we know, anything that gains electrons is getting reduced and anything that loses electrons is getting oxidized. So phosphorus is getting both reduced and oxidized and we allotted the uh, oxidation states, the, the numbers, to every, every atom. Now, what is the next step? 
you have to identify what got oxidized what got reduced you've done that also so what is the next step after identifying you have to make the number of electrons lost equal to the number of electrons gained or the number of electrons lost and gained should be equal and how do we uh, balance that by changing the stoichiometric coefficients of the species involved so here we have one electron that is being lost and three electrons that are gained in order to make one electron if three electrons are gained three electrons should be lost so this species should be multiplied by three right we multiply this species by three and then by doing that what have we got the number of electrons lost and gained becomes equal after having done this we have handled the redox part in the next step what do we do we need to find out the charges on both the sides of the equation and if the charges are not equal these reactions are taking place in basic medium this one also and this also so if they are taking place in basic how do i guess this is taking place in basic medium it has oh negative and that is how uh, that is um, a base would generate oh negative so i already uh, in the question that the child asked me she did not tell me it is a base it is the basic medium although in the question you would be given this but in case you're not told if you find the presence of oh negative it means the reaction is taking place in basic medium so if it is taking place in basic medium, you can balance the charges on both the sides using uh, OH negative. So let us first write down how many charges are there. So I write down the equation again without the oxidation states. You have P4, which is neutral, okay, plus OH negative, which is one negative charge, plus we, uh, we'll give PH3, which is neutral, and thrice H2PO2 negative. So there are three negative charges three negative charges on this side and one negative charge on this side. On the reactant side, you have only one negative charge and on the product side, you have three negative charges. In order to balance the negative charges, you must have two more negative charges here. How would you do that? By adding OH negative. There is one OH negative already here. If I add two more and I make it three OH negatives, now I have three negative charges on the reactant side and three negative charges on the product side. So now I have balanced the charges on the reactant and the product side also. So the, the charges on both the sides are equal. After having done this, I have to add water molecules in order to balance the hydrogens that I have added. So let us start counting the hydrogens. On this side, I have three hydrogens. And on this side, how many hydrogens do I have? Three twos are six. Six plus three, nine. I have nine hydrogens on this side and I have only three hydrogens on this side. Can you guess how how many water molecules should I add and on which side in order to make the hydrogens equal? Three hydrogens, three hydrogens cancelled out. So I'm left with six hydrogens. For how many water molecules can be made from six hydrogens? Three molecules. Because each molecule of water has two hydrogens. So we'll say I'll add two, three water molecules here. By adding three water molecules, I have balanced the hydrogen. And in the last step, what do you do? You just verify that the number of atoms of each element on both the sides should be equal. So let's do that. There, is, there are four phosphorus on the left-hand side. One phosphorus plus three phosphorus is four phosphorus. There are three oxygen. How many oxygens do you have? Three oxygen plus three oxygen. You have six oxygens. Three twos are six oxygens. How many hydrogens? You have nine hydrogens here. Six plus three, nine. Three plus six, nine. So everything is balanced. So you have balanced your equation. I hope that helped. And now I have one more problem that I took just to uh, make the video a little, uh, have some more substance to it. So I thought I'll do solve just one more, numeric, uh, one more equation. This is again an equation, I have taken this from your textbook exercise, that is perhaps the 19th question of your exercise. And this reaction is taking place in basic medium again. And we need to solve it by oxidation number method. The question is N2, the, the equation is N2H4 plus ClO3 negative will give NO plus Cl negative. All right, all formulae are already given to us. We need to assign the oxidation states to each um, atom. Hydrogen always has a charge of plus one. 
So there are four positive charges and two nitrogens are giving those four positive charges. So each nitrogen would be contributing how many positive charges? How many negative charges? Two negative charges. So this should have a charge of minus two. Each nitrogen should have a charge of minus two. So there are four negative charges and four positive charges. It is a neutral species. So we have assigned the oxidation states here. In ClO3, oxygen always has a charge of minus two. And there are three oxygen, so six negative charges, but the entire species is negatively charged, has one negative charge. Therefore, out of the six negative charges, five have been neutralized by chlorine. So chlorine should have an oxidation state of plus five. Right? This pen is getting a little old. So it has an oxidation state of plus five and in NO, oxygen is more electronegative, so it has an oxidation state of minus 2. And therefore, since it's a neutral molecule, nitrogen should have an oxidation state of plus 2. And in Cl negative, the oxidation state of chlorine is minus 1. We have assigned all the oxidation states. Next step, identify what is getting oxidized, what is getting reduced. So you have to find out where is the oxidation number increasing and where is the oxidation number decreasing. Who is undergoing change in oxidation number? Hydrogen is not there in the products here. So we will be using, since it is basic medium, we'll be balancing the hydrogens and everything in the end with water. Or we will be balancing the charges with OH negative, since it is the basic medium. Anyway, ignoring that now, we come to nitrogen. Nitrogen is minus two, and here it goes to plus two, right? Do you see from minus two, it has gone to plus two, which means a change of four electrons has taken place. If the, uh, the charge is going from negative to positive, there is an increase in oxidation number. It means it is getting oxidized. And what is oxidation? It is loss of electrons. It means it lost four electrons, right? And chlorine went from plus five to minus one. Chlorine goes from plus five to minus one, a change of six electrons. And since it is a decrease in oxidation number, it is gaining those many electrons. So it is decrease in oxidation number means negative charge is increasing. And negative charge increases by gaining electrons. So it gains six electrons. Now, nitrogen loses four electrons and chlorine gains six electrons. If I want to uh, make them equal, how can I do it? In order to make them equal, let me, there are two nitrogens here. Mm. Since there are two nitrogens, actually what is the loss of electrons that is taking place? Eight electrons. Do you see that? There are two nitrogens, therefore there should be a loss of eight electrons. One nitrogen is undergoing a change of four electrons. So two nitrogens should be undergoing a loss of eight electrons is taking place. So on the whole, eight electrons are being lost and six electrons are being gained. In order to make them equal, let us find the lowest common factor and then we cross multiply them. So let us divide these by two. Two threes are six and two fours are eight. So let us multiply this by, cross multiply, multiply this by three and this by four, right? The nitrogen was four and for chlorine we had three. So we multiply nitrogen by three and chlorine by four. And by doing this now, if I multiply eight electrons by three and six electrons by four, right? That is what I've done. Yes and you get eight threes are 24, 24 on both sides, six fours are 24, right? So now we have got this number of electrons lost and number of electrons gained has become equal by changing the stoichiometric coefficients. How did we do it? By finding the least common factor, the common, uh, uh, the lowest, bringing, the, bringing it down to the lowest uh, factor and then cross multiplying it. I do not uh, remember the mathematical terms very correctly, but that is what you're doing, bringing it down to the least and then cross multiplying it so that you get the same number. After this step, what is the next step? In the next step, now we have, since we have done this, the redox part is done. 
Now we, we do not bother about the oxidation state. So we rewrite our equation. Now what are we left with? 3N2H4 which is neutral plus 4ClO3 negative will give me NO. Okay. Now since there are six nitrogens here let us just use a little common sense and put the six nitrogens let us balance at least these atoms not oxygen and hydrogen but let us balance the other atoms that is nitrogen and chlorine there are six nitrogens here so there should be six nitrogens here there are four chlorines here so there should be four chlorines here so let us balance out all uh, atoms which are not oxygen or uh, hydrogen because now we are going to use only water molecules to balance the rest of the molecule so you have 6NO plus 4Cl negative. Now, how many, uh, let us find out the charges on both the sides. On this side, you have four negative charges. And on this side also, you have four negative charges. Do you see this? Since the negative charges on both the sides are already equal, if the negative charges were unequal, I would have balanced them using OH negative because this reaction is taking place in basic medium. Remember? Now, since the charges are already equal, there is no need for me to add OH negative to any side. So, this step is already taken care of. So, I'll move to the next step. And what is the next step? To balance the oxygens and hydrogens using water molecules. So now I bring my focus to oxygen and hydrogen and fill up the water molecules in order to make it uh, balanced. So now in order to balance the hydrogens and oxygens, what do we do? We just find out how many hydrogen atoms are there. And using the hydrogen atoms, whichever side has it, on the other side, we fill it up with water molecules. So we have hydrogen on the reactant side. And how many hydrogens do we have? Three fours are 12, right? So you have 12 hydrogens. Out of 12 hydrogens, how many water molecules can you make? You can make six molecules of water. So we'll add six H2O on this side, right? If you can add six water molecules, now we have done, we balanced the hydrogens and oxygens should have been taken care of on their own. And in order to confirm it, let us now see all the atoms which are on all the sides. We choose our six nitrogens, six nitrogens done. Four hydrogens, four threes, are 12 hydrogens here and 12 hydrogens here done. Four chlorines and fluor chlor four chlorines here and four threes are 12. 12 oxygens, you have 6 oxygens here and 6 oxygens here, which makes it 12 oxygens, which is which shows that all the elements, all atoms of all elements are balanced on in the equation. So we have achieved the balancing of equation by oxidation number method for both these equations. So that was the idea of solving these two problems or balancing these two chemical equations using oxidation number method. And with that, I will wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.